introducing myself. Hi, I'm Laura Gentle. Yeah. How y'all doing? I want to thank everybody for, hold on, this is so short. How'd you do this, Mary? Um, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. This isn't a thousand people standing here, but that isn't what counts. Everyone that's standing here right now has the power to change the city of Atlanta. Every single person here, even if you don't live in the city of Atlanta, you don't have to just vote to make a difference. You can call up representatives, you can call up the mayor, whoever the next person is gonna be, you have a voice. And I don't want anybody to ever forget that and don't let anybody tell you differently. Yeah. Atlanta has a long history of gay and lesbian activism. And it's not known, a lot of people don't know that. Atlanta had gay and, hist uh, gay and lesbian rights. Sometimes people were on the street voicing about concerns before they were doing it in New York, before they were doing it in San Francisco. We have that history. We need to bring that history back to the focus. Don't, don't let people tell you because this is the South, you have to be a second class citizen, you can't start a movement. Don't believe that. legal equality, we're talking about marriage. Just because we're in the South doesn't mean you shouldn't fight for that. But legal equality just isn't marriage either. Legal equality is about being safe on the streets, being safe in your job, being safe to be openly gay, being safe to be openly transgendered. And for the next mayor, they're going to have some questions to answer about the Atlanta Eagle. We don't want what happened at the Atlanta Eagle to ever happen again. But what are they gonna do about what's already happened? What about the charges? Drop the charges, yes. The charges need to be dropped. The four staff members and the four dancers need to have the charges dropped. It, they were bogus charges, everybody knows it. Shirley Franklin has not answered that call for action. The next mayor is going to have to answer that call for action. If we're gonna talk about legal equality, then you have every right to be in a gay bar watching a football game or a Project Runway and not have the cops come in and bust it up, put you down on the ground for an hour in class. And here's another thing you can do besides voicing your concern to your elected officials, you can go out and support gay businesses. The Atlanta Eagle has been there for over 20 years. They've survived economies, they've survived fashion changes, they've survived <laughs> cultural changes, and they're still there because it's needed. And even if the Atlanta Eagle isn't your gay bar, go and support them once a month. I'm a little straight girl, and I go to the Eagle every week, and I love it. It's a great community. Yeah. It's part of the Atlanta gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual community. Go out and put your money where your community is. Keep those businesses open. I want to read y'all something, speaking of history. This is from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution in 1966. They were doing a lot of gay bar raids about this time. And they did the same thing that they did to the Eagle. Except at the Eagle, they didn't arrest anybody for anything related to drugs or sex or liquor charges. The AJC article was talking about the lack of unity in the gay community. And a lot of people say Atlanta has a gay population. They don't have a gay community. Atlanta's homosexuals are content to remain quiet and not militant about change. They want society's acceptance. They want to hold jobs without fear, but they usually don't carry signs or wave banners about it. Well, that was 1966. Things have changed. And in 2010, you keep your eyes open because every person here has the ability to make the new year a real new year for GLBT rights. Every single one of you has the power to do that. Keep standing up. Write your officials. Come out here with your signs and your banners and you show them that there is militant change and it is possible and it is coming to Atlanta now. Yeah.